Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I really hope that you guys have been enjoying your Wednesday and we're going to be taking a look at what is going on across the North Atlantic. We'll be looking at the uh, temperature anomaly map. Some of us have been quite cool and windy as well. We'll be taking a look at those. I'll also be giving you an update as it relates to the New Year's Day earthquake which struck Japan on monday so let's get straight into it as we take a look at the satellite imagery here we can see that there's that storm system up there not affecting anyone at the moment but there is some rainfall activity moving through portions of the u.s and even some stronger winds across some areas as well as an airflow pressure is in the region there so it is helping to induce some more unstable weather as we look to the caribbean not seeing any significant convection but of course there are some patches of clouds around which may induce rainfall but on the whole, there isn't any uh, significant feature at the moment in the Caribbean. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what is happening in terms of the rainfall. So this is the rainfall forecast from Euro, and it actually goes out to late tonight going into tomorrow morning. And here we can see that uh, some of these areas are highlighted in these red and some of these uh, orangish yellow shade. And so there could be some decent rainfall along portions of the southeastern U.S. states, especially the Gulf Coast states as we head through the rest of today. Louisiana going to southern Mississippi, Alabama, even for portions of Florida as well going into Georgia and the Carolinas. There could be some decent shower activity. And as it relates to the Caribbean, here we can see that much isn't really expected across the islands. As I said, there are some showers moving through here and there. So uh, there could be that happening at times, but it's been very windy. And that is depicted right now on the Euro uh, wind map. We can see these shades of purples and some blues popping up as well. So the darker that purple shade, the more we're heading up to around 60 knots. And also with those blue shades, we're going up to around 18 and 20 knots. And we can clearly see that in the Gulf of Mexico, though a portion of it is cut off, we can see some of those dark purple and those blue shadings popping up. So some of those wind gusts could be up to around 20 or 25 knots. Other windy areas include the southern Bahamas as well as the Turks and Caicos Islands. Even as we head towards northern Hispaniola, the islands of Jamaica, it's also been windy for some of us, the ABC Islands. And then later today, as we uh, take a look at the southeastern Caribbean islands, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, and through much of the windward islands, it may also get a bit windy, those stronger winds coming in from the east. Things a bit quieter in the northeast Caribbean and over towards some portions of Central America. So that's what that's been what's happening. And then as we take a look at the temperature anomaly map, here we can see it and these blue shadings they represent below average temperatures, which simply means that the temperature is a bit uh, cooler than what is typical at this time of year and the darker that shade of blue going on to the purples the lower that temperature is there we have that key over to the right side of your screen so those values are actually in degrees celsius so we can see some of these blue shadings still across portions of central america the southeast u.s and the caribbean islands and the bahamas and turks and caicos islands as well it's been quite cool and windy and then looking at this map here, this is the sea surface temperature anomaly map. So similar to what we just looked at, but we're just looking at the sea surface temperatures. And now we can see these shades of yellows, these pale oranges and reds as well. So that is indicating above average temperatures. And this is actually a concern alongside many other factors with the upcoming hurricane season, which is some time away, nothing to worry about at the moment. However, I will be talking about this some more, and especially when I begin my annual hurricane season countdown videos, which are on a weekly basis. So uh, that's going to begin, I believe, in March, early March thereabout, where I take a look at any news regarding the hurricane season and just overall conditions, because this upcoming season may be a lot more interesting than the 2023 season. So we'll have that to talk about, guys. But this is an early sign. The above average temperatures, that is what caused last hurricane season to be so active, the fourth most active in recorded history. And so it could be a significant influence this season yet again, especially with what happens with El Nino over in the Pacific. So El Nino is the warm phase of what is known as the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Basically, the fluctuation of temperature across a portion of the eastern and central equatorial Pacific but as I stated, that's definitely something to talk more about in those future videos. 
Now, finally, I'm briefly giving you an update on the death toll in Japan, unfortunately, with that earthquake that struck on New Year's Day. That 7.5 or 7.6 reports fluctuate between those magnitudes of what the quake actually was. So it was very devastating and more than 70 individuals have lost their lives, likely due to those collapsed buildings or structures because that was a very powerful shake in there. It is the unfortunate reality for many persons. And so guys, as usual, I'll continue to keep you posted on all that is happening and that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update and I hope you found it to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I can and remember to always be weather wise.